Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today, we're going to be blasting Caustic Wound Grinding Terror Demo 2018. Recorded and mixed by Ethan Camp and mastered by Brad Boatwright. Oh, shit. This is so fucking good. You got Lindstrom on vocals from Fetid and Cerebral Rot, Slacker on guitar, Bowman on guitar, T. Wolf on bass, Seymour on drums. You have members of fucking Fetid, Magruder Grind, Mortiferum, Caustic, I meant Cerebral Rot, Fetid, just a gnarly fucking lineup. A great demo leading up to a great full length. It's just. I love the demo so fucking much. Hails. And definitely one of my favorite Ethan Camp recordings. And today, I want to talk about some Swedish grind from the late 90s. Nozum. Inhale. Exhale. 38 tracks of blistering Swedish grindcore. Sadly, when Mazuko passed away in the 2004 tsunami, it was like right after they had pretty much dropped one of their best records ever. It's probably, it's one of those things I really, I'm kind of like, Part of me wants to say Shift is my favorite, but like, Inhale, Exhale is absolutely amazing, and so is Helvet. Like, these are killer fucking slabs of grind, and I fucking love this stuff. And it just, man, it never really seems dated or anything like that, but I think after the tsunami and everything, everybody pretty much wrote off, you know, Nalsum, like, show's over, but Grind Finale came out, and then they did a couple live performances, and I'm pretty sure it was the frontman of Rotten Sound that did vocals, and great fucking choice, but I'm not 100% positive, but... I do need to do a video on Rotten Sound, Murder Works, or Exit ASAP. Like, those two records. I know Exit is gonna be fucking hell to get a copy of. But that... Oh, man. When it first came out, from the cover to the just... That whole album is fucking insane. If you've never heard Rotten Sound Exit, it's definitely one of my favorite records to come out of Finland. Like, I love Murder Works, but to me, that's Rotten Sound on a whole different level. Like, I was lucky enough to see Rotten Sound play with Arsis and the Red Chord, which was very weird of a lineup at the First Unitarian Church. They played on the floor, covered in blood. It was awesome. But I never got to see Nalsum. And it's one of those things that kind of bums me out. But the whole situation, I remember getting word about, you know, the tsunami and how a lot of people from Scandinavia, they travel to, like, India and, you know, countries, like, in the down in by the Indian Ocean and whatnot and that's like where they vacation so Nalsum at the time on MySpace I remember they made a post saying you know that Mazuko is missing with I think his girlfriend and sadly he passed away and that was technically the end of Nalsum, but they did, you know, a couple live performances. I know right now that Self-Made God is doing a DVD, 
and some hoodies and t-shirts to go along with that DVD, which I'm pretty sure is their last live performance. But Inhale Exhale was recorded in 1998. And it is so fucking good. It might have been recorded in 97, but no. It was mastered in February 1998. And it's just such a fucking killer, killer record. It was recorded at Sound Lab Studios in Sweden, December 1997 to January 1998. And we have Anders Jacobson on drums and low vocals and Mazuko on guitars, bass, and vocals on this release. So, Nalzum acting as a two-piece. This is so fucking sick. It's just, oh, everything about this release, it's like, wow. Grindcore is awesome. And the cover alone is very, you know, I would even say it's kind of like a cliche with grind, with the gas masks and everything, but like, there's beauty in a picture like this. It might be hard to see, but I feel like I, I love this. It sums up what I know already at this point I'm getting myself into with 38 tracks of fucking grind from Sweden. It's just, it's so fucking good, and the cosmetics on the LP as well, which the vinyl sounds fan-fucking-tastic, but it also has some of the gnarliest LP cosmetics in my collection. Thank you, Aaron. When I saw these two Nalzum records as part of a trade that he threw in, I was like, dude, like, you really don't want these? And he was like, nah, I, I never listened to them. He's like, I really have to be in the mood for Grindcore. And I was just like, dude, like, thank you, brother, man. Like, if you're watching this, Aaron, like, you have no idea how much these two records really mean to be in my collection. Like, I fucking love Nalsum, and I'm so glad to be able to talk about this band. Also, more boat, more boast, Dad. Fuck yeah. But, back to the subject at hand. Nalsum, inhale, exhale. You can be a grind father, or you can be new to grindcore. This is a record that, if you like it, then chances are you're going to love a lot of grindcore, and you probably should go listen to Brutal Truth and go down the grindcore rabbit hole. You don't have to, but I would highly recommend going back to Napalm Death's B-Side of Scum. You can listen to the A-side, too. It's good, but it's not as good as the B-side. All the Lee Doran era Napalm Death records, including the Mentally Murdered EP, and mostly, I would say, the Peel Sessions. Extremely important. And check out Unseen Terror as well. Check out Terrorizer. Like, I can go on and on, but... When Nalzum were really, really making moves, it was during a time where Relapse was kind of on top of, like, the grind game. And they also had bands coming in, like Mastodon, that at first, you know, they had that Neurosis meets Black Sabbath sound. And then it just kept getting heavier and heavier, after the Life's Blood EP, you had Remission. Then after Remission, you had... Fucking... Dollar Signs with Leviathan. And after Leviathan and a bunch of fucking tours... Like... I used to be real cool with Troy from Mastodon's brother to where I would get like backstage passes and stuff and... They really helped me out of a jam 
getting a birthday present for my ex-girlfriend as well, like giving me a pair of personalized autographed symbols by Mastodon who were opening up for Slayer that night. Like, it was kind of a big deal. It was also their first tour with Slayer. This is like 2004 I'm talking about. So, like, Leviathan had just been unleashed on the world and, you know, they still had songs from Remission in their set list and stuff and it was just fucking awesome. And, you know, you had High on Fire as well who were coming off of the art of self-defense and then... When they signed the relapse, they did Surrounded by Thieves, and a monster was literally born out of that record. As High on Fire won a fucking Grammy. Hails to Greg Wilkinson for producing that monster as well. I need to get that record because it's fucking great. But what does all this have to do with Nausum? To me, this record marks a milestone when it comes to Relapse Records. This was, to me, that second wave of gnarliness of Relapse starting. I would say, like, 1997 to 2005. That was the second wave. The first wave of Relapse bands, you obviously know... There's so many classics, I would say, from day one all the way up until maybe 94. And then it kind of flatlined a little bit until Neurosis kind of, you know, like, once Times of Grace came out, it was like, all right, this is something special. And... That's another band I've yet to be able to really dive into on the channel, is Neurosis. I missed out on that box set, and trust me, I kicked myself in the ass every day because I had the money at one point, and I, I just was like, I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait, and then it was sold out. But these 38 tracks, they go by just like a fucking punch in the face. It's just great. Killer riffs, insane blasting, great vocals, and amazing lyrics. To me, that makes up Nausum. It's one of the reasons Nausum are one of those grind bands. When people are first getting into grindcore, I always, always suggest checking out. Because it's, you know, it's not like super fucking gnarly. It's not something like you know, Disgorge Forensic, which is a completely different level of grindcore. And this is a little bit more of a digestible record. And when it comes to Nalsum dis Nalsum's discography, I feel this is one of their strongest records, along with Helvet and Shift. But Human... 2.0 I think it is all their records are fucking great but you really can't go wrong with Inhale Exhale by Nalsum killer Swedish grindcore and when we got signed to Relapse Mizuko and I stood in front of a huge challenge making a full length album and they talk about like writing 60 to 70 songs in order to reach 45 minutes. So we left in the fat and wrote longer songs, taking some of the more adventurous roads to reach our musical goals, which was eventually expanded more on the following releases and thus became a part of the Noisum sound. And Inhale, Exhale was recorded on Dan Swano's old 16-track tape recorder. Sound Lab Studios was then located in a small basement next to a Chinese restaurant kitchen. It always smelled of old food and garbage. It goes into talking about the recording and whatnot. I got the cover picture from a friend years earlier and saved it for future use. 
which is a great fucking photo. When we started talking to Relapse, I told them that we had a good cover idea and I made a quick montage in Photoshop and sent it to them. But when we did the cover, our friend Robert, with our friend Robert Alborg, we got cold feet because we figured that it was a famous photo shot by some hotshot and we didn't want to get in trouble. So we did another cover to be safe. I got a call from Matt Jacobson owner or ex-owner of Relapse Records, I'm not sure anymore, asking me, where are all the gas masks? I told him about our worries and he said they would take the risk. The cover turned out excellent and the gas masks have become a gimmick for Nalsum and Grindcore in general. In hindsight, my only regret is that inhale slash exhale became a little longer than needed. We could have easily perhaps as much as 10 songs left out without making the album feel incomplete or short. Nevertheless, it feels great that inhale, exhale have reached a certain status in the large catalog of grindcore albums that have been produced during the last 25 years or so. Apparently, the timing was perfect when it was released. There was a void in the array of extreme music at the end of the 90s that was filled with our very first album, something we never could have thought of when we were racking our brains about how to make a full-length album. Anders Jacobson, September... 2014. Just, wow. Y you need to check out Nalsum. Inhale, exhale, check it out. Relapse Records. Killer slab of late 90s grindcore. This was before Napalm Death even made their comeback. And they made their comeback with Enemy of the Music Business. But we were blasting... Caustic Wound, and the soon-to-be legendary Grinding Terror demo, 2018. So many people ask me to trade this, and I can't do it. I'm sorry. It's one of those. I, I can't. But I do wish somebody would put this out on, like, a 12-inch vinyl or something, a 10-inch, 7-inch. I don't know. I don't think it wouldn't fit on a 7-inch. Like... This deserves to be on wax, but it is what it is. I love it. But thank you again to Aaron for throwing this Nalsum record my way. I don't think he knew how much inhale, exhale really, you know, means to me as a record. Not just as a grind record, but just as a part of my life and just a part of, you know, going down that grindcore rabbit hole and one of the bands that really helped me do that was Nalsum as well as Brutal Truth and you know as soon as I heard Pig Destroyer's Prowler in the Yard it was like oh my god grind like it took over my life for a couple of years like I was just like a crusty grind fucking freak I, I loved it so much like it was my favorite you know genre of music for a time period and it still has a place in my heart like I love it but I love you folks as well for watching thank you all yesterday for the support I did I did need it I made that video reluctantly and it was hard to make like I was really really holding feelings in and I needed to release and that this just felt right and like I said I know I'm not even at 5,000 subscribers but like I feel like my dad would be proud of just putting in work he always hated when I put in work and didn't get paid but still you know putting in the hustle and giving you folks content because I just want to make, you know, everybody stoked on killer tunes. So 
listen to Nauseam, and yeah, keep on blasting. As always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. Hells. Yeah.